Welcome back to Still Plus Politics. A conflict between federal lawmakers and Minister of State for Labor, Employment and Productivity, Fessas Kiamo, over the National Directorate of Employment and the Planned Employment of Nigerians in the Special Public Works Program 2020 has taken a new twist as the National Assembly asked the executive to immediately put the exercise on hold. According to the National Assembly, the executive must not go ahead with the recruitment process until implementation modalities are explained to lawmakers. Joining us to make sense of this conflict is Ezenwa Mwago, a pro-transparency advocate. You wear so many caps, so I prefer to call you a pro-transparency advocate. Good evening and good to have you. Good evening. It's my pleasure. Yeah, let's look at, um, I'm sure you're privy to the drama, but let's look at the new twist. Uh, the National Assembly are unanimous. They had a joint session where the spokesperson of the Senate and the spokesperson of the House of Reps say the process should be put on hold. Do you consider that the right decision? Well, I, I think they've always been unanimous in, in anything that is anti-people. Uh, they are unanimous in taking furniture allowances. They are unanimous in oversighting to their pockets. They are also unanimous in everything but the things that uh, will resonate with the reason for which the National Assembly exists, which is first and foremost uh, to keep the pulse. They are the keepers of the pulse uh, of the Nigerian people. But in, the, in, the, in what we have seen, we are constantly seeing them wanting to appropriate uh, uh, the responsibility of the other arm of government. I, I don't think that it is, it is in the purview of the National Assembly to direct, like uh, Festus Kiyamu said, to direct the National Assembly. A committee of the National Assembly is what it is. It's a committee of the National Assembly it should report to the plenary. Okay. And uh, I, I, I will come back to you. I just want to put something on record quickly. Uh, we're supposed to have uh, Honorable Benjamin Kalu to be part of this uh, conversation. But just a few minutes before the show, he declined. And he said, we should refer to the statement released by the spokespersons of the Senate and that of the House of Reps. So that our viewers would not think this is a one traffic uh, conversation, but still referring to some of the things they've said. They've said that they are the representatives of the people, and it is important they know what the process is, that they are just interested in transparency. So why would you, choosing your word now, think that they are just being unanimous when it has to do with their pocket? Because that statement also explained, according to them, that they were part of this whole idea. They want these jobs to be provided. Now, this is, a, this is an intervention, yeah? It's an intervention of the, the executive. Um, what is important is you can investigate the program. You can ask for explanations, but you cannot make a decree to stop the program. That's, that, is, that, is, that is outside the limit of the National Assembly. They cannot make that decree. Even the resolutions of the House is, is advisory. It's, it's advisory. It, it, does not comp it does not have the power of law. It is not an appropriation law. So you, you, a committee sits down, invites the, the, the minister. The minister, you, 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 after you have escorted him in the public, you now said you wanted to go into executive session, and he said no. If you are for transparency, you should be open. Transparency is not, executive sessions does not promote transparency. Executive session is shrouded in opacity and blocks out the people who, that you represent from understanding the questions that you are raising on their behalf. So it, once you call for executive, executive session, the, the argument of transparency is subverted already. So the, the, the issue is, is, is clear. Nobody argues with the power of the National Assembly to oversight the executive. 
Nobody argues with the uh, power of the National Assembly to make laws for the good governance of the country. Nobody quarrels with their power of representation. But you do not, therefore, become antagonistic in such a way that you derail, you know, a pro program of government. So I, I think, in all honesty, that the, this unanimity that he talks about, generality of the people who have seen the National Assembly, you know, the way they have operated before now, will tell you in very clear terms that they are overreaching themselves by the kind of ambush that we are trying, we, are, we, are, we almost always all the time see them want to do. And with the, with the, with the social intervention fund, you saw all the, all the drama around it. They kept bringing Mrs. Owais. It is not for good purposes. Let's not pretend about it. Every time they have done this, it is to ensure that they, they put their hand in the till, that they continue to put their hand in the till and direct. Even some members of the National Assembly are very angry about this, this, um, this, this, this approach. I think that cooperation, rather than the textbook separation of powers that they are trying to bring is, 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 not, is, what, okay. is, not, is not where we should go. I, I, I was coming to that, and I think you preempted me, because they actually explain that when you refer to government, you're talking about the three arms of government, and they even reminded that uh, the legislative powers is even before the executive power, section four, and the executive power is in section five, and judicial power is in section six. But let's look at it. I, I'm sorry to expose you that uh, you've been following politics, so it is okay to say that you know the ways of politicians. Don't you think we should look at the politics of this? Now, Kiamo has been accused of trying to build a political capital, but this House of Representatives, they said their, their youth will ask them, how did they raise 1,000 people in my local government and I cannot count them that they want to be part of the process? Can we look at the political part of it rather than using your word, the textbook part of it? I think that um, we're, what we're dealing with here is, is governance issue. The, the politics of it cannot supersede governance. And part of the many the crisis that we have had as a country is that we don't know where politics ends and where governance begins. Okay, the the people, this one thousand people in the states will not be invented from, will not be sourced from other states. They will be still sourced from the local governments. In one way or the other, they are people of those local governments, and they are all their constituents. So. The, the whole argument about the youth asking them, it is the same thing that they have done. They have overstretched their power of oversight in the way that they ambush employment opportunities within ministries, departments, and agencies. All you need to do is to interview any managing, any, any, any MD, any director general of any MDA that you can talk about. If there are 60 jobs anywhere, the members of National Assembly want to take 50. Then where is the equal opportunity of place for ordinary Nigerians who will not collect letters from them? I think it is high time that they understand that their activities are already known to the generality of Nigerians, and they are not going to get support in this adventure. Okay. Uh, uh, it is important that they redress, they currently redress themselves. Uh, the powers that they talk about, the power you have is clear. You, you have three core responsibilities as a, as a legislator. Okay. One is to make laws for the good governance of the country. The other one is to represent the power of representation and oversight. Oversight is interrogation. You do not interrogate what has not what has not gone wrong. You want to be part of the initiation of the project. You want to be the part of the execution, and you want to also be the one oversighting. So th that takes me I to probably my last question because of time. That takes me to my last yeah. question. So where do we go from here? Do they have the power to put it on hold, like they've announced, or this is just some kind of political? propaganda, so to say. 
I, I think you also understand this. It's, it's to raise the stakes. I understand that a percentage was already considered to them, and they are saying that that percentage is pretty small. So we're going to see a boardroom resolution of this. People will have to sit down and work out, and at the end of the day, that's how Nigeria works. Uh, but those of us citizens, we have responsibility to put the pressure on the National Assembly to stay within their limits and allow the executive to function and do what it has to do for the good of the generality of Nigerians and not to exalt politics above governance at this material point in time. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ezen Mwangu, a uh, pro-transparency advocate. Thank you for your time. We hope to have you some other time, probably when this issue is well resolved, amicably resolved, and it would be to the generality of Nigerians and not to some selected few. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Thank you so very much for having me. And to our viewers, thank you for still staying with us. We will take our plus report now. And when we return, I will be giving you my take, especially on this second topic. Please don't go anywhere. President Mohamed Buhari has asked the Nigerian Senate to approve the confirmation of 42 ambassadorial nominees. One of the nominees from the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, was appointed as a career ambassador while the rest are non-career nominees. The President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, read the list of the nominees on the floor of the Senate seeking the approval of lawmakers. Accordance to Section 171, Subsections 1, 2, C, and Subsection 4 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. I have the honor to forward for confirmation by the Senate the appointment of Mr. Suleiman Sani as career ambassador designate from the FCT. Copy of his curriculum vitae is attached herewith. It is my hope that this request will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the Senate. Please accept the single Senate president the assurances of my highest consideration. You are sincerely, Mama Dubhari. Appointment of non-career ambassadors designate. In accordance with section 171, subsections 1, 2, C, and subsection 4 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, I have the honor to forward for confirmation by the Senate the underlisted 41 names of nominees as non-career ambassadors designate. Copies of their curriculum vitae are here attached here with, uh, attached here with. One, Engineer Umar Suleiman Adamawa, Mr. Kevin Peter Adamawa, Oboro Efion Akpabio Akwaibom, Chief Elijah Onyagba Anambra, Abuba Kardi Ibrahim C. Bauchi. Here is my take. My take is that of an appeal in the interest of 773,000 or call it 774,000 unemployed youths, in the interest of those that have been genuinely selected, in the interest of teaming dependence on these lucky youths. Let there be both legal and political solutions to the proverbial battles of the titans. Remember, you are first a public servant before you remember your ego. Mr. President and all important interveners, please do step in. And that's our program for today. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. Do have a good evening.